taking the other one out so you can actually see like what I do. Um, one mistake I just made, so I want to make sure that I point it out, is um, I have a jack on the other side, on the actual beam axle itself. It was only about maybe six or eight inches in from the spring, but you know I had it jacked up a little bit to kind of take some of the weight off of it. And then I came around to this side. I also had a jack over here, a little scissor jack under the, the beam on this side, about the same distance in. But I had enough pressure on the other side that when I released this all the way, it just shot right up and it just hit the bump stop. So it wasn't like it was, you know, it was just a little more violent than I was expecting because the uh, the U-bolt was, you know, I could wiggle it. It was loose and there was a whole lot of stress that it was, you know, a whole lot of pressure on it. Um, if that makes sense. So it kind of kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, Nothing happened, you know, I always, whenever I'm working with stuff like this, I try to keep as many of my digits and body parts away from things as much as possible. Just, you know, or at least out of the direct line of fire. Um, of if something's going to give, at least I can kind of jump back quickly enough. So if nothing happened, it just was a little bit of a startle. Again, should have had the camera rolling. I'm using my phone right now because the GoPro was overheating, um, I guess from sitting in the sun. So... I'm gonna go around the other side now. And I'm gonna take the spring shackle bolt off of this side. So I've already got U bolts off of this side. It's technically 13 16, but I'm gonna see if I can just get away with using the, the 21 since I'm replacing the bolt anyway. Um, the inside of this is uh, 11 16 So right now I have the jack back under it, so it's the axle is resting on the jack um, What may end up happening is this may want to kind of ro fall and rotate on the weight of this, but It's gonna you know, it's probably gonna roll that way and it won't hit me Not a whole lot of stress it's under. If I could move that right now, that means there's a lot of pressure on it. And as soon as you got it out, it would want to give like really just violent. So it just falls down out of the way, no big deal. still is one u-bolt on the other side it, it's just kind of wedged in there it's probably going to hold it a little bit for now i'm just going to put the jack it's going to put right under the drum and there it goes <laughs> yeah it's okay It's, it's really top heavy, so once, as soon as it's free, it just wants to kind of roll. But it's okay, it's relatively easy to manage it at that point. I think I may have rounded that damn nut off. Alright, we got it. Yeah, started to round it off. But it's getting replaced, so it's okay. 
So let's just put this under here. Just so it doesn't fall. My air compressor's not on, that's why this is kind of running out of juice. Looks like my dog can't find a way out. Zeus. I don't see him running out there to the FedEx guy yet, so I guess it's okay. So what I did with the other one, so I've got my dolly under there. So just kind of like rotate it up. Get it around this. Just kind of like finagle it out of there. Drag it, you know, it's just gonna rub on the bottom, so you just kind of twist it to get it off the ground, and then you can just roll it out on that. That's pretty much that. I'm gonna get the new one, position it so you got the brake wires on the correct side. So, the brake gets wired on this side, you wanna make sure you have your loose wires on that side. Just kind of Get you centered on there. Twist it up off the ground a little bit. Have an extra pair of hands is gonna make it a lot easier. kind of sit by themselves without being bolted down on this flat part of the spring seat right here but it's got to be pretty much level and fixed otherwise it's just going to want to roll off so I'm going to go around to the other side first just because the big the uh, four jacks are already over there Shack will kind of rock forward. Try 
sure I get that straight. Do that on the other side and move back all right so the spring shackle bolts are in on both sides so the spring is up and reasonably level so now we have to try to do is rotate this and get it to sit where it's supposed to be sitting on a flat spot and it's in the it's in the groove or in the dowel whatever you want to call it So I'm just going to go ahead and put them on the other side and then we'll torque everything down, connect the brakes, and that's pretty much going to be it. So I'll come back after I'm done torquing everything down. Alright, well at least on the other side, when I tighten it down from the inside, I was able to tighten it all the way down to 70 foot-pounds without it twisting the whole bolt. This side, right when I got there, it did start to twist. So I guess it's just normal. You know, it's not gonna back out because of that, the nut on the other side. So I guess as long as you have it tightened down to the right spec, it should be okay. So I have to hold this on. To do it that way because it is better um, a lot of times you'll have nuts the nut itself if it has a flat portion kind of like this it'll have the ribs in the nut in that case you want to tighten the bolt not the nut because you're going to scrape those little ribs off in this case it's the opposite so i'm more used to it being with on the, the nut side so that's why i did it that way at first but I think it'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Again, I'll just retorque everything after I've driven it a little bit. I just love the size for the U bolts on the other side. I can 
Okay, that's basically it. Put the wheel back on this side, connect the brakes on the other side, and it's done. And we'll go around and retorque all the wheels once it's on the ground. I'm not sure the spec on the wheels. I think they're about 100 foot pounds. Pretty sure it's 100 foot pounds. And do this with a torque wrench too. Don't just go for it. I did that last year when I first put them on, mostly just to snug it down. And when I went back, with a torque wrench, they were still way loose. Especially because these are these uh, threads have like paint on them from the factory. Some of them, I think, kind of flaked off on that one a little bit. But that's going to kind of make it feel tighter than it is. So make sure you use the torque wrench. I'm only using the impact gun just to kind of snug it down and get it most of the way there. So that's all the way down. Um, really can't tell yet because I have to actually like take the weight off of the the jack stands front to back as far as like how low it's going to sit. But I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. All right, so brakes are connected um, on the front axle. You have the you basically have three wires you're dealing with. You're dealing with the one coming in, and then it goes out to the second axle. So you're just twisting three wires together. Oh, not exactly the same. All right, so off camera, I'm gonna torque all the lug nuts down. But for right now, I'm gonna to try to get all the weight back on the axles so we can see how far down it really wants to sit. All right, so that's pretty much 
just sitting on the axles. Um, just pull the jack stands out from underneath those. So, I mean, there's no noticeable difference in the uh, the height. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, you think it's an inch, it's not that much. Sometimes, like, you know, you change the diameter of a wheel in a car by one inch and it looks much bigger. Um, I mean, like, for example, right here, the Camry has a 14-inch wheel. The BMW has a 17-inch wheel. It's only three inches difference, and look how much bigger the BMW looks. So that's three-inch difference. But... Basically, no difference that I can really see. So, anyway guys, uh, I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, share. Um, again, you know, I'm an amateur. This is the first time I've ever done this. So, please um, do it at your own risk. I try to show you the way that I would know, you know the way that I do it which is in my mind for my vehicle, my family is as safe as I can make it. And um, I of course mean the same for anyone watching, but please do it at your own risk. I am not responsible for any mistakes that may happen down the road. So anyway, that being said, again, thanks so much for watching. <sighs> now I gotta clean all this mess up.